Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. This is now Beta 5 of Patch 2.2, The Guardians, and Frontier have at last enabled module storage and module transfer. So to try that out, to give it a bit of a go, I'm going to need to move some of my ships over to my current location. With the ship price transfer, I still feel it's a little bit excessive. 1.3 million to move an ASP 164 light years and around 6 million or so to move a Type 9 to the current location. And you may remember on the Gamescom live streams how Frontier, especially Adam Woods, kept mentioning the fact that you'd be able to move a Type 9 over to your current location to complete a transport community goal. Well, with the fees being so high, it seems that that would be a little bit unreasonable and cost inefficient. Don't get me wrong, it's a great tool to have in the game, and for a one-off move of all your ships to get them into a single location, it's very effective. But if you're going to want to keep moving them around to make good use of them for various scenarios, then the cost is going to get them very excessive indeed in a short amount of time. At any rate, all my ships are now on their way to this particular station. And of course, they're bringing all their fitted modules along with them, which includes a number of engineered modules as well. So let's take a look at what the module transfer and storage is actually like. So you can store any module you actually like, optional modules or core modules, and of course utility and hard points as well. Here under the transfer options, we've got store and transfer. Transfer, it allows us to move uh, modules from another location. And we'll have a look at that again in just a moment. And of course, we've got the ability to store. Storage is free, there's no cost of it but there is a bit of a limit. There's only 30 modules that you're allowed to store, and that is 30 modules per account, not per station. So many people are feeling that's a little bit limited, and you can see already I've got 10 uh, modules in storage. A lot of that is just from modules I've simply unloaded without giving it too much thought. So you are gonna to have to be quite careful in how you go about managing this. The module with the little down arrow next to it is a module that's stored here at the station, and the one above it, are ones that are stored elsewhere and you can see there's a time and a cost for getting them moved to this location. One of the things everyone's are really going to be wanting to do here is storing their engineered modules, either for coming back to later on or for transferring them into another ship. So that was my modified class 5 FSD and I'm going to move it into my Orca here. Now the Orca has got all the default module sizes at the moment, there's no changes at all to this so I really wanted to get the best jump range possible to try out with some passenger missions and using the modified FSD is the perfect option for this. You may have noticed that when I removed the FSD from my ASP it was actually replaced with a basic quality one and that's because you can't leave a ship without any core modules it will automatically always be replaced with a basic version even if that station doesn't actually carry any stock of those particular modules and this always enables you to remove the modules as and when you see fit. The Orca is a ship with a pretty low jump range, just look at that, 6 light years and nearly 7 light years, really not much good for anything at all. So the ability to fit in this uh, FSD here is a great help, bringing us up to 20 light years. So right there, you can see my stored engineered FSD and it's very simple to move this into the Orca now. You just select transfer options and then transfer again and there's a cost of zero for transferring that. And there we go, all done. Very, very easy, all in all. Now, there is another option here. There is a section now called Stored Modules, and this shows all the modules you've got available in the game, both at the current station as well as stored at other stations. And just as I mentioned before, there's a arrow next to the module name telling you which modules are stored locally, and all other modules have a time marker next to them as well as a cost telling you how long and how much it's going to take to get those to you. And there's another nice option here, Store Multiple and this will give you a listing of all the modules fitted to your current ship. And this is very simple to use. Simply check off the older modules that you want to remove, and you can see down the bottom, it goes into your storage there. 16 of 30, and now complete, now at 17. So this is going to get filled up very, very quickly for many people. And there's a nice big thread on the forums, of course, where people are asking for this to be increased. And, well, it'd be interesting to hear your feedback on that too. Let me know in the comments below on whether you think the uh, limit of 30 is more than enough or whether it's not enough. So there are many extras and fixes going into Beta 5 and one of the additions 
is size 2 and size 3 passenger cabins and this of course means that we can fit passenger cabins now to all ships including sidewinders and eagles. Naturally though these ships are far too small to take any significant number of passengers and for the moment at least in, this, in the sidewinder you can only fit economy class cabins. You can have a slightly higher class cabin with an eagle because that does have a size 3 slot available. The bottom line of all this though means that you can now have four passengers in a sidewinder, four economy class passengers. And at just 4,000 credits for that cabin, it's really not very expensive, meaning anyone, right even in the early stages of the game, can start doing passenger missions. The prices we've now got in the Beta 5 are no longer discounted as they previously were. So here is one of those passenger missions, a nice reward of 200,000 credits. That's actually pretty good if someone is starting out with the game. But do keep in mind all the passenger traits there as they may cause problems and do of course check out the distance you've got to go. This one is just 14 and a half light years. Unfortunately though I wasn't able to take this mission on this particular occasion because there is a bug of some sort preventing that. But when you want to take the missions you can see you just choose the cabin there to put the passengers into. This is a bug that Frontier are well aware of. It's something they're looking into and I'm pretty sure that they are going to get it fixed quite soon. Strangely enough, it only seems to be affecting the size 2 and size 3 cabins. And of course, not everyone has the same problem. Anyway, that is a quick look at module storage, which is going to be very nice. The prices for transfer modules seem to be pretty reasonable, and the time delays, I don't mind them too much either. But the cost of ship transfer does seem to be a little bit expensive, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on all that as well. Do let me know in the comments section. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time.